Alright guys, in today's video we're going to be talking more about the PlayStation 5. We have some new information to go over and talk about. The first thing we're going to be talking about comes from Digital Foundry where they are doing yet another deep dive breakdown of the PlayStation 5's specifications. We are not going over everything they talked about. I will have the video linked down below so you can check it out for yourself. It is pretty lengthy and they go into great detail and honestly there isn't too much more we learned from this video that we didn't already know. However, the most interesting part to me was when Digital Foundry discussed talking to different developers and how the developers are implementing the smart shift technology that the PlayStation 5 is going to utilize between the CPU and the GPU. So we're gonna highlight that and talk about it. We're also gonna be talking about the PlayStation 5 breakdown and how Mark Cerny has hinted that we can expect to see it relatively soon and they are going to go into great detail about the cooling system they're using, which they seem pretty proud of. So that will be interesting. And finally, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5's price and how it may have actually leaked out and it may end up being a little bit cheaper than maybe some people were expecting. So before we get into all this, do me a favor and leave the video a like if you want to help it out or if you're excited for the PlayStation 5. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss any future content. But starting with Digital Foundry, what I'm going to do is actually play a clip from the video. It's a short clip where it's um, Richard talking about the smart shift technology and he highlighted the fact that they have talked to a couple of developers and kind of asked them how they're making games on the PS5 like what are they doing and multiple developers have told him that they have a lot of overhead left with the CPU and because of that they're able to kind of transfer that excess power over to the GPU so it can hit that 10.3 teflop num number consistently and he goes on to express how he's expecting most games at least in the beginning to basically do this because there's going to be that cross-gen period where developers are still going to be coming up with game engines and fine-tuning their game engines to be able to fully harness everything that these next generation consoles are going to offer so i'm going to let the video clip play here and we'll talk about it a little bit more afterwards uh, one of the breakthroughs that Sony has made here. The firm has identified clocks that create pretty much equal thermal density across the SoC, meaning that, as Mark Cerny told me, they're equivalently easy or difficult to cool. So look, it's been a while since Mark's presentation and developers are now a little more open with us here at Digital Foundry about how they are using the PS5. More than one developer has told us that they are running the CPU throttle back allowing for excess power to pour into the GPU to ensure a consistently locked 2.23 GHz. So on the one hand, the 10.28 teraflops, we will see titles, and many of them I suspect, coming out of the gate at launch with full GPU performance. On the other, CPU probably won't be stressed to anything like the same degree. The point is though, we're entering what I suspect will be a prolonged cross-gen period. Game engines will still be engineered primarily for AMD Jaguar. Even if we run 30fps current gen games at 60fps on PS5, I suspect the CPU will still have a ton of overhead left over. More than enough for some of its power budget to be re-diverted to ensure max GPU clocks. But what was described to me by developers doesn't sound much like a variable clock. It sounded more like CPU GPU profiles used on Switch. Something I wanted clarification on. Well, Mark Cerny has already confirmed that PlayStation 5 uses AMD's Smart Shift technology, which is literally the process of CPU power being re-diverted to the GPU. But he told me that the fixed profiles developers are discussing with me are only used in PlayStation 5 dev kits. In retail games, their code will tap into the variable clocks for extra performance. And so we have some very interesting information coming from Digital Foundry about the PlayStation 5. And the most interesting thing I got from this is how Mark Cerny basically confirmed that developers who are currently working on games for the PlayStation 5 and have the dev kits, they actually are working with locked clock speeds when it comes to the CPU and GPU. However, you're going to see the variable clock speeds come into play with the final retail unit when you're actually playing it and when you have the final version of the game the console is going to automatically detect if there's any overhead 
and it's going to shift it over that excess power to the GPU to kind of bump up performance. And so it really just kind of highlights the theme of the PlayStation 5, which is it's going for efficiency here. It wants to basically be a smart console that will detect automatically when there's overhead and what different shifts it can make and where it can make those shifts and transfer power here, transfer it there, to essentially make it that anytime you're playing a game on your PS5, it's going to try to extract the most out of it as possible. It's going to always try to hit the best possible performance based on whatever game you're playing, which sounds pretty cool. And it's at a point now where I'd say most people are kind of over hearing about the specifications and the tech talk. And, you know, as I've said, Sony's been doing a really good job telling, however, not a very good job showing. And this just kind of adds to that. However, it is, I think, kind of understandable considering the games that Sony has left to release on the PlayStation 4, arguably some of the biggest games that they're going to be releasing for the entire generation, Final Fantasy VII Remake, The Last of Us Part II, and Ghost of Tsushima. And we don't know when Sony plans to talk about the PlayStation 5 again. However, I would say that it's very, very likely that when Sony does talk about the PlayStation 5 again, we will in fact get to see it. And Mark Cerny does kind of allude to this a little bit where he talks about the PlayStation 5 teardown and how he's pretty excited to show off the cooling solution that they're implementing inside of the PlayStation 5. It says that Sony will publish a teardown of the PlayStation 5's hardware soon. Designer Mark Cerny has alluded to in an interview with Digital Foundry, the overwhelmingly dense article which expands upon many of the points made in Mark Cerny's recent presentation makes references to the next-gen console's cooling system. We're saving that for our teardown. I think you'll be quite happy with what the engineering team came up with when he was asked obviously about the cooling system and he is basically just letting us know that at some point in the future could be this month it could be next month or the month after that maybe sometime during the summer they plan to do a playstation 5 teardown to show off the cooling system as well as everything else which is really cool so hopefully that will be sooner rather than later but overall it's at a point where I think everybody is aware that both of these consoles are going to be very powerful, but it really is at a point where Sony needs to show it. We need to see these games in action. We need to see this performance boosting in action, right? Like, it's nice to talk about, but we need to see what it's really going to do, um, you know, in a tangible way with our games. And I'm ready for that. I think everybody at this point is ready for that. So hopefully it will be happening happening soon, but still some very interesting information from Digital Foundry speaking to Mark Cerny. And the final thing we're going to be highlighting here has to do with the price of the PlayStation 5 and how it may have actually leaked out. It said the PS5's price may have been leaked by a gaming store and the cost almost seems too good to be true. Notebook Check reports that Canadian retailer Play and Trade Vancouver Island has opened pre-orders for the PS5 at $559 Canadian, converted that is roughly $396, which would make the PS5 a tiny bit cheaper than the PS4 was at launch at $399. That sounds surprising at first, but there are some potential explanations for why the store is charging such a low price. It's possible that Play and Trade doesn't know the exact price of the PS5 yet and will ask for a subsequent payment in order to balance out the cost. Equally, Sony might be keeping the retail price deliberately low in order to undercut the next generation Xbox, which may be more expensive due to its more powerful processing abilities. Sony also did this last generation when they offered the PS4 at $100 less than the Xbox One, and it helped them gain an early lead obviously we all remember that and so I think we are going to see a very similar but also very different situation this time now the reason why I'm talking about this is not because I necessarily believe that this is a retailer just actually leaking the price it's more about how plausible is this and frankly I think it is extremely plausible that Sony could sell the PlayStation 5 at $399 and they would very well have to sell it at a most likely significant loss but they might have no choice in this matter, or at least that may be how they end up feeling, because the truth is, when you look at the situation and the way it's played out, public perception as of right now is 
Xbox has the more powerful console, and a lot of people, unfortunately, are still left feeling pretty confused about how exactly, how powerful exactly the PlayStation 5 is, and that's why I keep saying that it's really going to be up to Sony to really show it and stop telling it at this point, because everything they're offering, if you look into it and you listen to, you know, very tech-minded people doing deep dive analysis of it, they tell you the same thing, this console is awesome and it's going to be doing some amazing things for games, so will the next generation Xbox of course, but right now when it comes to basic marketing, it says the Xbox is the more powerful console and that's all people need to hear to kind of tune out of the PlayStation 5. So this is where I think Sony could really correct the situation almost instantaneously and be forgiven once they reveal the price and if we find out it will in fact be cheaper than the next generation xbox then i think that's going to pretty much mean everything to a lot of people not everybody of course but for a lot of people price really is everything there's a lot of people again that are kind of like iffy with the playstation 5 right now in general not playstation fans or people who are just excited about the consoles in general but a lot of people who are just kind of on the fence or not as invested they just hear again that the ps5 um, it has less T-flops, and because of that, they're like, well, it certainly can't be the same price. Now, the SSD tech that Sony's utilizing obviously is going to make the, you know, bump up the price, and we hear about this lavish exotic cooling technology that they're using that's also going to bump up the price, but I have a very good feeling that Sony is going to try to undercut the Xbox no matter what. But we have actually Phil Spencer saying some interesting things about the pricing of their next generation console as well. He did a recent interview and I'm probably going to save that for a separate video because he had a lot to reveal about Microsoft's current stance when it comes to next generation and revealed a little bit more about their plans. So yeah, I mean this leak could be true. We could be looking at a 399 PS5 and so at this point I'm going to leave it to you guys let me know your thoughts about everything we talked about what do you think about Digital Foundry expanding more on the smart shift technology that the PS5 is using with the CPU and the GPU let me know what you think about Mark Cerny revealing that they plan to do a PlayStation 5 teardown in the not too distant future and let me know what you think about this price leak do you believe it do you think it's actually going to be $399 or do you think it's going to be more expensive than that I will be very interested to see what you guys have to say again leave the video a like if you enjoyed it or found it informative subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share this video out on top of all that but until next time guys take care